Hey, shallow one, Mitchell. Shallow one. This feels weird already. <laughs> shallow one, brothers and sisters. Shallow one. Oh, whoa, whoa. Hold on. Put this on. Yeah, that's, that, that's, that's scary. Okay. Let's hope this, this battery stays on. Hey, first and foremost, I want to give all honors and praises to Yahweh. Bahashim, Yahweh Shah, Bahashim, Rekha, Kwadash. want to give double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone for bringing out 100% truth and keeping it real. Salutations to the 144 hopeful elect of Israel pushing this word in all truth and sincerity. And the one-third of Israel who believe in the word and follow the Lamb wherever we go. Shalom, brothers and sisters. Shalom, y'all. Hey, all praises to Yahweh Shem Hashem for bringing us out again tonight on the highways and hedges. Um, and, you know, this, this live camp, man, is going to be based on, you know, this, uh, I had this this desire to to make an epistle you know all last week uh, about it is not of him that will it nor of him that run it but you have a that showeth mercy and uh, you know just so happens before we get into the epistle you know I had a dream last night really I uh, two dreams I had an odd dream last night bro that I died yeah uh, yeah <laughs> so we talking about ultimate mercy here you know on one hand you know, we would like to see the downfall of our enemies and everything. But on the other hand, you know, that's, 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 that's some real mercy. You know, to be called back, to be, to, to be called back in the spirit form, to be with Yahweh Hashem Hashem, you know, in, in, in heaven. Uh, because we understand, we're going to get the scripture right now. You know, we understand that by this time of Jacob's trouble, the shit about to hit the fan. You know, this second death, everything, all the calamities, all of those things, bro. And I don't know where that dream came from. I don't, you know, I'm not, you know, I, that's why I didn't make an epistle about it. But we'll go into it a little bit now. It was a simple dream. I was driving. And down here, man, we got some curvy, curvy ass roads, bro. Some curvy ass roads with some steep ass cliffs. I mean, these mother, you go on one of these motherfucking cliffs. I think, I, I don't know, I, I'm not, I'm not good with, uh, Measurements and calculations and, and, and feet and shit like that. But I'm sure that some of these cliffs are like a thousand feet down. Like, uh, if I had to guess, uh, to the, that's the police station right down below us. And uh, if I had to guess, I believe that would be like 300 feet maybe. You know, like a, like a block or something. Like, a, like three blocks could, could count for almost like 300 feet. I'm not sure. I'm just saying something. I'm trying to gauge it in my mind. Like, you know, from here to the truck. That's that's probably uh, 60 feet, something like that, you know. So and on and on and on. So like 500 to 1,000 feet to some of those these some of these cliffs. So anyway, I was driving. Now y'all, I was I was driving and uh, some kind of way my car just went over the cliff, you know. And at that moment, brothers and sisters, I just thought about, oh, oh, now this is this is nice. And I said I wasn't I wasn't upset, I wasn't afraid. I was so calm in the dream. It was only a few seconds of dream. You know, and I was like, I actually said, had the chance to say the water you have about Shai. You know, and I, I think I, I I can't say for sure if I thought about ultimate mercy or something like that. I just knew that I was at peace before I even died. I just knew when that car hit you know, in the dream, I just knew when and it, not, not, no, no, if, but when that car hit the bottom of that cliff, I knew it was gonna be over. And I was like, shit, I might have feel, I don't know, I don't even know. It just, it was just like, as soon as that car went off the cliff, true. You know, like in the movies, when the, when the sound goes quiet, that's how it was. As soon as I hit that, that curb, and I was like, fuck, the curb, I, motherfucker, and the car just went, whew, to the side like that. It all just went quiet, and I had a moment to just calm down. I was like calm as hell, and I was like thinking to myself, "The water you have, my this is this is so nice, you know. It's over, something like that." I was thinking, and let's get let's get these scriptures, bro, because hey, all right, bro, because through the spirit of the power you have, Hashem, Hashem, man, we, we pray for this epistle, you know. Lord willing, it's gonna be edifying and exhorting, brothers and sisters, bring us a lot of comfort, because. You know, we're talking about the one true living God, the, the creator of all things. You know, thy kingdom come, 
thy will be done at the end of the day just at the just just think about at the end of the day think about how you have Hashem Hashem already declared the end from the beginning we're talking about uh, ultimate mercy at the end of all this okay that's what we ultimately talking about you know and we're gonna we're gonna go through a few things here you know uh, through the spirit and power you have Hashem Hashem Lord when it's gonna be edifying and exhorting okay first I want to go back kind of like you know, I, like I said, this, uh, this, I think that, that, you know, through the Spirit and probably how about Shemashah, I think that dream uh, sparked a few other things that I didn't think about, you know, for this epistle initially. Because uh, in the, in the, uh, the epistle I had, I had set up, I spoke to the, to the brother New Jerusalem about it already. You know, I had the few scriptures talking about uh, if Job, Daniel, and uh, Noah were in it, they can only save themselves, you know, so ultimately that, that would be ultimate mercy of Yahweh Shem uh, You know, just to roughly uh, give you an outline of the, of the, of the, uh, of the epistle, pretty much. You know, so that's, that's one form of mercy. You know, uh, understanding that whoever is delivered at this time is not of works of him that, uh, it's not of works if any man should boast. But it's of Yahweh Shem that shows mercy at the end of the day. I won't, I'm not going to say no more about it. We'll just get in, get it, get in, get it to the epistle and bring them out as scripture by scripture. You know, precept upon precept. Okay. Um, so anyway, I think I wanted to go to Ecclesiastes in the Bible real quick to just talk about life and death real quick, just to touch on it. Speaking about the spiritual realm and these things, things like that. Okay. So where my glasses at? Let's see. We got Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes in the Bible chapter 12 verse 7 it says okay perfect you know like I said when I when I hit the uh, night when I hit the when I hit the cliff and we started to go off the cliff man I just knew it was all over this is the book of uh, Ecclesiastes in the in the Bible chapter 12 verse 7 then shall the dust return to the earth as it was, and the spirit shall return unto you. How about Shemashah who gave it? Right. So the you know the when you die, you 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 this this physical uh, chains of darkness, this this carnal flesh, you know it's gonna go go back into the dust. But your spirit, who you really are, is gonna return to the one. How about Shemashah who gave it? Then shall the dust return to the earth as it was, and the spirit shall return. To until you have about who gave it. So at that moment, you know you're gonna be you, you're like, hey, they're like in them and you've seen them in the movies how they how they try to betray uh, life and death in the movies and how the um, the spirit when it gets gets off the off the operating table or whatever, it's just standing around, you know, like, and it's it's so calm. It's like what happened, you know? Oh well, that's my body. Oh shit. Well, damn, you know. They're not worried about people standing around crying and shit. <laughs> this is the book of Job, chapter 3, verse 17. It says, the wicked, it says there, we're talking about up there in the spiritual realm. When they, you know, when that, when they, uh, when the, when the, when this body returns to the dust and the spirit returns to, to him that, that gave it. Job, chapter uh, 3, verse 17, there the wicked cease from troubling. And there the weary be at rest. There the prisoners rest together. They hear not the voice of the oppressor. The small and great are there. And the servant is free from his master. So ultimately, you know, you're thinking about these things. You think about these scriptures that we read right now. You know, you get to get a, you start to get a, a understanding of what's really happening here. You know, through the spirit and the power of Yahweh Shemashah. We're gonna get. We're not. We're not stop there. We're gonna continue going back. Ecclesiastes in the Bible again, chapter three, verse sixteen. And I should have kept my place in Ecclesiastes. Here it is. Ecclesiastes chapter three, verse sixteen. It says, um, and it says that the head at the heading of this, it says, "All living things meet the same end." It says, and moreover, I saw under the sun the place of judgment, that wickedness was there, and the place of righteousness, that iniquity was there. You know, and I want to get this same scripture real quick in the, in, the, uh, in the Good News Translation. 
So we know that under 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 the sun, this is the place of great judgment. So you know, long story short, just to just to put it in there, whatever we I don't want to get into it too much about the reincarnation. But whatever we've done in our bodies, we're gonna have to give account for. It. We're gonna have to stand in front of the judgment seat when we go when our spirit goes back to Yahweh Shemasha. You know, we're gonna uh, get judged, and after the third and fourth generation, come back down here under the sun and live out our our, put, our our punishment, our judgment. Okay, we're gonna live it out. That's why you see some people born, maybe born blind or born deformed. You know. Because they're living out their judgment. You know, are they born in extreme poverty situations or some real fucked up situation? Are they an orphan? You know, all kind of all kind of stuff, bro. So like I said, I want to get this Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 16. It's windy tonight, bro. It's windy. I hope it, I hope the wind's not interfering with the uh with the audio, I got I got one of those socks on the thing and everything. I can got everything I can to try to reduce it. Okay. Um. Here, let's get this. Ecclesiastes, chapter three, verse sixteen, and over here it says injustice in the world, in the Good News translation. If y'all can read that. Okay, it says. In addition, I have also noticed that in this world you find wickedness there. You, uh, Salaki, in this world you find wickedness where justice and right ought to be okay right because what the shepherd say when the um, when the righteous are in authority the people rejoice but when the wicked bear rule the people mourn okay so in addition I have also noticed that in this world you find wickedness where justice and right and right ought Salaki man I also have noticed that in this world you find wickedness where justice and right ought to be. Okay? Because we understand that this world is in the hands of the wicked. Esau Edom, the Caucasian race. The devil that the Bible speaks of. I told myself God is going to judge the righteous and, and the evil alike because everything every action will happen in its own set time. I decided that God is testing us to show us that we are no more better than animals. <clears throat> you know, that's why Yahweh Shem said, you know, some of these motherfuckers run around here acting like brute beasts. You know, we know that Esau is profane and outside the temple. And the scripture speaks about how how the, uh, the ruler of the people is, the king, so are the people, you know. And they're, they're promoting this Babylon juice on all the earth, man. So people dropping all their values and morals and just... That have that that uh, satanic do as thou wilt spirit out here, bro. It says, I decided that Yahweh Shemasha is testing us to show us that we are no more better than animals. After all, the same fate awaits human beings and animals alike. One dies just like the other. They are the same kind of creature. A human being is no better than no better off than an animal, because life has no meaning for either. They are both going to the same place, the dust. They both came from it and uh, they will both go back to it. How can anyone be sure that the human spirit goes upward while the animal spirit goes down into the ground? So I realized then that the best thing we can do is enjoy what we can do. Salaki, so the best thing we can do is to enjoy what we have worked for. There is nothing else we can do. There is no way for us to know what will happen after we die, but now we know. Because now the Lord has blessed us, showing us mercy, you know, and that's what we're talking about right here. Let's let's continue. I want to make sure we, you know, hammer that uh, that understanding over and over again uh, as we go out through this epistle. It's about Yahweh Shemashah that shows mercy, and He's called us out of darkness, so we no longer as brute beast. You know, we're putting on as the elect. We're we're coming back, rehearsing the righteous acts, bro. You know, through the Spirit and the power of Yahweh Shemashah. Those. 144 hopeful elected one third of Israel of us that is okay. Hold on. Let me do this uh, Let's see where we at now So I almost wanted to get that Just because I don't want to confuse it with the uh, with that good news translation. I, I, let's see 
Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 16 once again in the, in the KJV it says and moreover I saw under the sun the place of judgment that wickedness was there and the place of righteousness that iniquity was there you know and we're gonna leave it right there because uh, uh, chapter 4 goes on to talk about acts of oppression you know uh, Ecclesiastes is a beautiful a beautiful book man you know of course and there's another one that we're gonna get to in Ecclesiastes before we move on Ecclesiastes chapter 1 verse 2 exactly right so under heaven you know the earth is given into the hand of the wicked uh, right now the children of Israel we're under the curses yes uh, Esau is in their heaven yes but the Lord is showing us mercy by giving us the understanding that this is not the end all be all okay let's go get this uh, Ecclesiastes in the Bible chapter 1 verse 2 vanity of vanities said the preacher vanity of vanities all is vanity what profit have a man of all his labors which he taketh under the sun and then it goes on to say life is an endless circle one generation passes away and the other generation is coming but the earth abideth forever the sun also arises and the sun goeth down and hasten to his place where he arose the wind goeth toward the south and turneth about unto the north it whirls it about continually and the wind returneth again according to his cir circuits all the rivers run into the sea yet the sea is not full until the place from whence the rivers come thither they return not again all things are full of labor man cannot utter it the eye is not satisfied with seeing nor the ear filled with hearing uh, verse 9 nothing it says nothing new under the sun the thing that has been it is that which is which which shall be and that which is done is that which shall be done and there is no new thing under the sun it's right it's a it's a it's a it's a constant cycle bro you know we just spoke about life and death you know the spirit goes right to right back to Yahweh Shema Shai. You know, and the Lord is showing us this mercy. It's a great mercy to know that this is not the end all be all. To know that you know uh, where there's no vision of people perish. To understand that the, the second covenant is 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 about to come into play, baby. We were talking about an uh, everlasting rulership. Number one, we're talking about it's not going to all be vanity anymore. You know, after a while, because we're going to be able to live and enjoy the fruits of our labors. You know, that's what he's talking about right here. And that's great mercy. The Lord's talking about giving us uh, new bodies. We're never going to be immortal, bro. Okay, so that's mercy. Talking about a kingdom where dwell of righteousness, that's, that's run in righteousness, being joint heirs in the kingdom of heaven with Yahweh Shemashah. So, we're talking about the, 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 the true mercies of Yahweh Shemashah here, bro. You know, and that's worth, man, and even to say, to, to humbly say, that's worth fighting for. We got to understand that even to say that, to think that, is mercy from the Lord to put that in our spirit to believe and to hope and to say these things, to feel this way, bro. It's great mercy at the end of the day. Okay? It says, is, is there anything whereof it may be said, verse 10. So this is Ecclesiastes in the Bible, chapter 10, uh, chapter 1, verse 10. Is there anything there wherefore it may be said, see, this is new. It have been already of old time which was before us right that that old generation back that the third or fourth generation was us but now we're back in this time there is no remembrance of former things we don't remember who we were in that previous life neither shall there be any remembrance of things that are to come to those that shall come after right so in this cycle you know that's why, uh, let me see, do I want to say this? Like, in the, re the regeneration and the reincarnation, you know, um, like, there's a difference between being raised from the dead, like, back into your body, the spirit putting, being put in your body, then you can remember what happened, you know? And there's a difference between dying all the way 
and then coming back being reborn as a newborn baby you won't remember anything okay just want to put that out there okay now and that's great mercy and it's all if you man it's all of the will and the power of Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai no it's like I was thinking about that the other day too like uh, like, like the scripture speaks about If you believe the same spirit that raised up Yahweh Shah is able to raise our vile bodies up. Let me go get that scripture so I'm not roughly paraphrasing it. You know. Uh, like Yahweh Shah came to do the will of Yahweh. You know, he came as King Solomon. You know. He came as Isaac. And that was the power and the will of Yahweh, you know, and it's mercy for all, you know, the first Adam, the last Adam, man. I don't know. I don't, we don't want to get, hey, we don't want to get too deep with it because, you know, as, as the elders and the brothers always say, just stay one deep. Okay. I just want, you know, I'm just thankful, you know, for the, like I said, the dream, man, it set it off in a little different position that we were, we were in. We were, uh, you know, just to, just to meditate on, on that for a little bit. Uh, so anyway, I'm trying to get that scripture we were just talking about. Uh, This is not what I, I don't think this is what I was looking for. Okay, let's see what this one does. It's the same scripture. Let's just, let's go get it. Romans chapter 8, verse 11. It says, But if the spirit that has raised up Yahweh Shah from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Yahweh Shah from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwell in you. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to, fle not to, the, not to the flesh to live after the flesh. For if ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if ye through the spirit do mortify the deeds of the body ye shall live and see all of this is is, is great mercy to have the spirit of Yahweh Shemashai in us to have this understanding that we're just not brute beasts we're just not under the vibration of Esau Edom the devil that the Bible speaks of that that, that do as thou wilt spirit out here on this earth but the Lord has got us to consider our ways you know <laughs> great mercy bro okay now think uh, so I think we can leave it off right there, you know. That's the point I wanted to make here in Ecclesiastes before we close it out was uh, was all is vanity under the sun. Let's let's jump down here to Ecclesiastes chapter two, verse. Uh, let's jump in there at ten. And whatsoever mine eyes desired, I kept not from them. I withheld not my heart from my any joy, for my heart rejoiced in all my labor. And this was my portion of all my labor. Then I looked on all the works that my hands had wrought, and on the labor that I had labored to do. And behold, all was vanity and vexation of spirit, and there was no profit under the sun. Right? King Solomon was rich, man. He was able to do, to explore all these different avenues, you know, of things that you know had pleasure under the sun you know he had uh because chapter two speaks about uh jumping there in verse four i made me great works i builded me houses not singular houses it was plural i planted me vineyards not 
singular vineyard, vineyards, you know. I made me gardens and orchards and I planted trees in them of all kinds of fruit. I made me pools of water to water there with, with them, the wood that bring, bringeth forth trees. I got me servants and maidens and had servants born in my house. Also I had great possessions of great and small cattle above all that were in Jerusalem before me. I gathered me also gold, also silver and gold and the particular treasures of, of kings and the provinces of the provinces. And I got me men singers and women singers and delights of the son of men as musical, as musical instruments and, and that all sorts. Okay? So I was great and increased more than all that were before me in Jerusalem. Also, my wisdom remained with me. Okay? Bro, check it out. This is beautiful. And whatsoever mine eyes desired, I kept not from them. I withheld not my heart from any joy, for my heart rejoiced in all my labor. And this was my portion of all my labor. Then I looked at all the works that my hands had wrought. And on the labor that I had labored to do, and behold, all was vanity and vexation of spirit. And there was no profit under the sun. Okay? You know, because he's talking about at the end of the day that he's going to have to die. He's going to have to leave. He had all the riches because King Solomon was like, um, was uh, King Solomon is Yahweh Shai. And it was like a prelude to the kingdom of heaven. Like, uh, he had all he had peace. He had all the nations under subjection. Uh, he had all the riches a, a, a man could amiss, as you just heard. But then at the end of it all, he looked forward to death, kind of like Esau right now. Esau has the blessing, you know. He's got the the fatness of the earth and the dew of heaven. You know, he's on top of the world, ma. But He's still not full, you know, he's still, you know, he's, of course, he's the wicked. And of course, this is the storyline, but just to, just to, uh, you know, just to look at it through spiritual lenses. Because what's at the end, now he's trying to find out how to, I, man, I remember before I came into the truth, I used to, have, used to talk about how can I stop this fucking train, this, this damn work. This work all day, all the time, you know, just the rat race. How can I stop it? I'm like, how the fuck? I just knew something. I was like, this is fucked up. God damn, you know? So Esau's got everything, bro. He's got the world. The earth is given to the hand of the wicked. But now he's trying to offset his prophecy. He's, he's struggling, trying to escape his death, the end of his kingdom. Even though he's got everything because it's all vanity and vexation of spirit at the end of the day. But the great mercy of Yahweh Shemashah, the second covenant about putting these laws in their inward parts. He said, you got to be God's upon the earth, brothers and sisters. You know what I'm saying? You're going to have an everlasting rulership. Immortality, brothers and sisters. I know, to speak about it. You know, it's uh, because what can you say at this point but have that hope of salvation? Because we believe the report, bro. It is. It's going to happen. Now, would you, I'm, you know, inside, I'm just almost numb, like, like that calmness. Like, if you know, you've already, you know, went back in the world, we, you know, asked all year round for this present. And you know it's probably under the Christmas tree. You know it is. But now you just have to wait for it. Just like the the the, uh, the captive exile hastened to be loosed. That he shall not die in the, in the pit and his bread shall not fail. Roughly paraphrasing. So that's what we're talking about here. You know, we know that the Lord is going to come back. We know World War III is going to kick off. We understand and believe about the implementation of the MRK, the concentration camps. You know. The, um, the sedition among men invading one another for lack of bread the famine of, of food the famine of the word you know the devil being cast out and kicked out of heaven we know it we believe it now we just have to be patient and wait on it it's like that that present under that tree 
Now, I hate, I hate to speak about it, but just using it as a reference, you know, like, uh, have you ever been in jail before and you just knew, oh, you, you got two weeks, bam, god damn it, motherfucker, it sucks being in there, but hey, it's two weeks, you know, that's why the strips, you have to play these strips in your, in your head, every now and then you might have to play that, that, that song, you know, I'm gonna bear the nation up, bear the indignation of Yahweh Shemasha to be plead my cause, you know, give me food convenient for me, bro, you know, um, give us our day this daily bread, please put the spirit on us to endure, I, sometimes I have to pray, bro, before I go to the plantation, you know, please, Lord, give me the spirit to endure, you know, and, and, and be able to walk amongst these people, and, and be humble, and calm down, and, you know, not, not show the agitation in my face, of, you know, all this stuff, man, Cause we be going through it like the brothers say. We all going through it, man. Like the brother from uh, Dallas just spoke about that. We all be, we going through it. Okay? And these are the conditions of the battle. Cause we have this treasure in earthen vessels, which is also mercy. You know, when we speak, we speak to these bug outs and stuff and they just, they don't see it, they don't get it, they don't understand. But they, they so smart with, with man's wisdom. They so smart with all these damn books and different philosophies that they fucking unstudy that don't make no motherfucking sense now that we have the truth. You know, listening to them motherfuckers talk about these false gods and false idols, you know, or these damn all these all this paganism and shit, all these all these damn gods of, of Africa and all this shit trying to mix it all together and you know it just it don't make no goddamn sense. And you be like, thank you, Lord. The reason why I say that because I spoke to one of them last night, bro. This motherfucker talking about some Hinduism, martial cut, mixing martial law. Uh, one one minute he believed the scriptures, next minute he don't believe the scriptures. My goodness, bro. The water you have about Shema Shah. Come on, y'all, let's go. Where we at now? Okay. So, all this vanity and vexation of spirit, right? Uh, then we want to go to Ecclesiastes one more time. Chapter 8, verse 15. We, let's start at uh, let's start at verse fourteen. It says there is a vanity. So there's Ecclesiastes in the Bible, verse uh, chapter eight, and it says right here, enjoy life, right in chapter eight. We're gonna jump all the way down, start at fourteen. It says there is a vanity which is done under the upon the earth that there is there that that there be just men unto whom it happened according to the work of the wicked again there be wicked men to whom it happened according to the work of the righteous I said that this also is vanity then I com then I commended mirth because a man have no better thing under the sun than to eat and to drink and to be merry think about this bro for that for that shall abide with him of his labor the days of his life which Yahweh Shemasha giveth him under the sun right the Lord is the one that shows mercy that give each man you know what they have each man is in their lot uh, each, Yahweh Shemasha is giving each man you know this or that is is you know like the scripture says uh it's a light thing for uh, Yahweh Shemasha on the sudden to make a poor man rich, right? Just just one just one scripture out of many, you know. Uh, the Lord is the one that kills to make alive. He's the one that brings the beggar out of the dunghill. Okay, the Lord is the one that shows mercy. Verse fifteen again. Then I commended mirth because a man have no better thing under the sun than to eat and to drink and to be merry. For that shall abide with him of his labors the ends the days of his life which Yahweh Shemashah giveth him under the sun right to eat drink and be merry think that think about that now now uh, you know through the spirit and the power of Yahweh Shemashah we we'll listen to the elders elders apostle great millstone just a little just a little while ago right and when we speak about the second covenant bro the great mercy that the Lord has blessed us uh, bestowed on us, the children of Israel, the so-called Negro, Hispanic, and Native American Indians. When we speak about having these laws put on our inward parts, when we speak about 
uh, First John. Uh, it, it does not yet appear how, how we shall be, but we know we're gonna look like, be like him when your house shall return. Elder Apostle uh, Tahar just spoke about that. He said we're gonna be extraterrestrial. We're gonna have extraterrestrial bodies. We're gonna have the best of both worlds, brothers and sisters. You know, we're gonna have the best of both worlds. Angels, angels, angels. God's upon the earth, bro. The best of both worlds. We're going to be able to eat, drink, and be merry, but still also obtain God-like powers, brothers and sisters. Spiritual powers. That's mercy. That's, that's mercy, man. An everlasting rulership. An everlasting kingdom. And ain't no Esau going to rise up. Thank you, Ace. All praise to you. How about you, my shot? The water... The water, yeah, how about you, my shot? The water, big Bishop Nate, for that that comic relief. Talking about Esau gonna rise up after the thousand years. You got, you got so many, you got Israelites out there stumbling all over the place all, all over there, man. I'm, I'm getting a uh, little few comments on the comment board every now and then, questioning, you know, questioning that some of the questions I believe are sincere. So, you know, I put the put the little understanding there, you know. Somebody asked about that today, and I just try to put it in perspective to them. I'm like, hey, okay, so the Esau, you know, the Greeks are, the, are Esau. The Roman Empire is Esau. That was their rule. They were, they were ruling. Dark Ages. Their rulership took a pause, you know. Renaissance. The deadly wound was healed, you know. Now here they come with the second leg of the Roman Empire, which means they're in rulership now. You know, because uh, what Bishop makes make me make, make, making people think that there's a, a second, uh, like like the when the scripture speaks about they're gonna go out and deceive the nations, he makes them thinking there's a second time for this. That's why they, that's why they're thinking about that, like a second uh, uh, rising up of Esau. You know, but that's just not true. It's just. You have to put it in that order, that's all. That's what I was trying to do through the Spirit of the Power of Yahweh and Lord willing, it came across properly to the guy. And I put some scriptures in there to uh, show, you know, showcase that to the best of my abilities. Um, so, yeah. So, we're talking about the best of both worlds right here. You know, that's that great that's great mercy of Yahweh Hashem HaShah. And don't forget, now, this is... The, the Lord's plan the whole time, bro, because he's already declared the end from the beginning. I want to go to, uh, my, get the Apocrypha right here. Been uh, under those right down there for a while, man. Going to Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 2. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 2, verse 10. It says, uh, let's start it, let's start up a little bit more. This is about Esau. And like we were speaking about earlier, right now the earth is given into the hand of the wicked. Job chapter 9, verse 24. So the earth is given into the hands of the wicked. We're living in the revised Roman Empire. Esau is in his blessing, which is also mercy of Yahweh Shemasha. He's got the fatness of the earth and the dew of heaven. You know, all these nations. Or under you know under his ass he's the hammer of the earth he's the sword of the Lord by his sword he's he's living right so he's saying still I'm gonna jump in here uh, in wisdom of Solomon chapter 2 verse 5 for our time is a very shadow that passes away and after our end there is no returning for it is the for it is fast sealed so that no man cometh again Right, so, you know, they got all this wealth. You know, of course, even the 34th generation, but there's no remembrance of former things. You, you gotta die, you're just a mortal man. You know, you, you damn billionaire, a fucking trillionaire. You know, what's this all about, motherfucker? Your hands, your old, your body old, and crime, oh, oh. How much fun can you have anyway? You're Edomites. Edomites don't, they, they don't look like, they don't even know, you know, you see some Edomites, bro, you don't, they don't even know. It just it just looked like they don't know how to enjoy their money. You know, of course they got the the fucking finer things in life. You know, the the upper echelons. You know, they got the golf course, 
you know, uh, country club shit going on. They got the, the nice cars and shit, but they're riding on pothole fucking roads. They're still on the same roads that we go to. Some of the, of course, they still got, they got uh, some, some elite special stores that we can't go into. But what, they're still fucking shoes. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you know, they got some high-end shit, but it's still the same shit. They got a purse. It's still a fucking pocketbook, even though it might cost four or five thousand dollars. Yeah, you got on a suit. So what? Yeah, it might cost a thousand dollars, five thousand dollars suit. Who gives a fuck? It's still a suit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But still, I'm just putting it in perspective, really, because at the end of the day, we, you know, we, we, we're the poor. We don't have nothing, but we still eat, and that's mercy of Yahweh Shemashah. And we're waiting. You know, uh, what does the say? Um, I know thy poverty, but thou art rich. You know, let's go get that real quick in the book of, uh, yeah, see. We just have to wait on the, on the, on the, on, we're blessed now, but we still have to wait on the ultimate blessing, should I say. Because this is great mercy that the Lord has bestowed on us. This is the book of uh, Revelation chapter 2 verse 9. I know thy works and tribulations and poverty, but thou art rich. And I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. We're going to use this today as a twofold scripture. Speaking about those wicked Israelites, you know, that are not all Israel and not Israel, you know, but also we're going to use it with those, uh, with them damn small hats too. I know thy works. And we're speaking about ourselves ultimately at the end of the day. The hopeful elect. I know thy works, thy tribulations and poverty. You know, we go through it. We're in these chains of darkness. We're under the curses. We're in hands of our enemies. But thou art rich. But we're rich. We're rich in faith. We have the promise of everlasting life and everlasting, everlasting rulership, bro. That's mercy. And I know the blasphemy of them that say they're Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan, bro. I want to leave it right there and jump back over here. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 2, verse 6. Let's start at 5 again. For our time is a very shadow that passes away. And after our end, there is no returning. For it is fast sealed, so that no man cometh again. Come on! Therefore, let us enjoy the good things that are present. And let us speedily use the creatures like as in youth. Let us fill ourselves with costly wine and ornaments. And let us flower to the spring. Let Salaki and let no... And let no flower of the spring pass by us. Let us crown ourselves with rosebuds before they be withered. Let none of us go without his part in our voluptuousness. Let us lead the tokens of our joyfulness in every place. For this is our portion and our lot is this. See, they, you know, this is their, they're in heaven, bro. They're in heaven. Let us oppress the poor righteous man let us not spare the widow nor reverence the ancient gray hairs of the age let our strength be the law of justice for that which is feeble is found to be nothing worth okay we're gonna leave it right there this just because it shows you know the stripper speaks about how the uh, I gotta I'm gonna go get it I don't want to rust I don't want to roughly paraphrase it I think it said the righteous, uh, the righteous consider the life of his beast, but the tender mercies of the wicked are cruel. Let me see. Yeah, it says uh, this is Proverbs chapter twelve, verse ten. A righteous man regardeth the life of his beast but the tender mercies of the wicked are cruel right the tender mercies of the wicked are cruel right now uh, there was a brother I think it was GMS dedications the other day had put up a, a little a beautiful it was part two of a video speaking about uh, they had a lot of Edomites and a lot of people around the world complaining about the sign of the times you know complaining about how how terrible their life is and how expensive things are you know and we got these uh, wicked ass Edomites the rulers of this world talking about their trick that trickle down you know how money the money's gonna trickle down to us you know I saw this movie called platform you know a while back and it is the same kind of like the same idea at the top of the platform you know it was like levels of, of this building 
and there was this platform that would come down and it had food on it. It had a whole like spread, like a whole feast on it at the top. So these people at the top was, would eat what they wanted and then the, 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 the thing would come down to the next floor. People on the next floor would eat what they wanted on it, then they would come down to the next floor. And after all these floors, after a while, ain't no food left on this motherfucker. Some of these floors, people actually spit the food out all on the table, you know, had sex on the table. All kind of fucking nasty shit, man, on the table. It was just, oh my God, what a disgusting movie. And that's these damn devils with that trickle down effect. That's why the scripture speaks about when the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. But when the wicked bear rule, the people mourn, okay? Yeah, mourn. Everybody crying because these motherfuckers, what, what the scripture said? A righteous man regarded the life of his beast, but the tender mercies of the wicked are cruel, right? We understand even in the kingdom of heaven, the, the slaves, the heathens, you know, they're going to be taken care of, bro. Like in uh, King Solomon's palace, the doorman, they, they, you know, the queen thought the doorman was the king. And if that don't tell you, that's, that's how, you know, that, if that don't tell you that when the wicked bear rule, the people mourn, but when the righteous bear rule, the people rejoice, if they don't tell you just a little glimpse of how wonderful it's going to be, I mean, damn, if you think the doorman was the king, holy smokes. Okay? But the, see, this is a, overall, this is the mercy of Yahweh Shem to give us this understanding. To give us this hope of salvation. To have us, to give us this treasure in earthly vessels, okay? That's what we're trying to just convey. You know, to have, give us the understanding of life and death. So we're not even, we don't even fear it. Bro, I'm telling you, man, once again with that dream, when I, when the car went off the goddamn thing, peace. My goodness. I just knew everything was going to be all right. It's like when the brothers, sometimes we speak about, you know, if we're going to get beheaded or if we're going to get thrown in the, you know, prison or something like that or have to go through a death that we're hoping that the Lord put the spirit on us to be at peace. There's even a scripture that speaks about this. Let me see if I can find it real quick. Yeah, here it is. We're already in Wisdom of Solomon. And this is uh, Wisdom of Solomon chapter 3, verse 2. All praise to you, how about Shema Shah? Let's start at verse 1. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 3, verse 1. It says, But the souls of the righteous are in the hand of Yahweh Baha Shem Yahushah, baby. All praise to you, Yahweh Shema Shah. And there shall no torment touch them. It says, In the sight of the unwise, they seem to die, but their departure is taken for misery. So like the end their departure is taking for misery. And they're going from us to be utter destruction. But they are in peace. For though they be punished in the sight of men, yet is their hope full of immortality. And having been a little chastened, they shall be greatly rewarded. For Yahweh Shemash proved them and found them worthy for himself. As gold in the furnace hath he tried them and received them as a burnt offering. And in the time of their visitation, they shall shine and run and to and fro like sparks among the stubble. They shall judge the nations and have dominion over the people. And their Lord, Yahweh Shemash shall reign forever. They that put their trust in him shall understand the truth baby and such as be faithful in love shall abide with him for grace and mercy grace and mercy is to his saints and he have care for his elect amen all praise to you how much for that scripture right there bro that was that was something else that was right on time my man that was right on time let's drink let's drink a little water Okay.
So, staying on the topic of mercy, true mercy, is to understand that this is not the end all be all. To understand that who we are, understand that who Esau Edom is, the Caucasian race, the devil that the Bible speaks of, and why things are the way they are. And that they're not going to stay like this. You know, there's some countries that take care of their people, take care of their citizens, and then, but here come Esau with that Babylon juice. Oh no, you should you should tax the shit out of them people. Don't give them that shit for free. Hey, you gotta be with us with this new agenda. You gotta we're, we're planning on putting M A R K C H I P S in everyone and watching them, controlling them. Yes, they're gonna be ours because we're gonna rule forever. Everything's gonna be ours. We're gonna put tags on every damn thing. We're gonna watch and control everything. You know, night. Because they're the wicked. They want to be as God. They want to be as Yahweh by Shemasha. You know. And I was thinking about that the other day too, bro. They want to be as God. You know, that's why I, I spoke about that. I think, was it yesterday? They want to be as God, so they uh, mimic everything, you know, trying to be like God. They, they want to create robots and shit, you know, androids and stuff. They want to create uh, artificial intelligence. They want to put the M-A-R-K-C-H-I-P in everybody so they can watch and understand and know everybody, what people think, what people feel and how people think. You know, like the stripper speaks about how the Yahweh Shemasha knows how many hairs we have on our head. You know, they want to know these things. They want to be able to uh, know what temperature your body is. Uh, you know, if you got to take a shit or a piss, who you with, who you with, who you going with, what you want to listen in on your conversations. All kind of fucking shit, bro. But you're just a mortal man, Esau. You know, the Lord has appointed a balance that you cannot pass. And also, ultimately, you know, at the end of the day, you're created to be the adversary. You're created to be the devil. So it's a, it's a, wow, it's like a, it's a beautiful story, man. You. So come on, let's get this. I want to get um, Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiasticus in the Apocrypha, chapter 39. Uh, verse 26 it says the principal things for for the whole use of a man's life are water fire iron salt flour of wheat honey milk the blood of the grape and oil and clothing all these are good for the godly so to the sinner they are turned into evil okay all those things, you know, the Lord, you know, produced on the earth for a man's life. You know, there's enough land for everybody to have their own cattle, you know, to have their own crops, and everybody lives in peace. You want to, you want to do a little trade, hey, you know, you want to, even if you want to live in, in the city, you know, if there is a city to be built, you know, or, or an agora, a marketplace, you can come and trade. But for the most part, you know, keep all the confusion down, marriages and stuff. Just imagine being on your own place and, you know, like, um, when I'm walking about, you know, we see all these damn Edomites. I know, we know they're in heaven. But for some reason, a lot of them, they come up with these fake-ass smiles all the time. Or when they meet you, they act like they're so fucking happy to meet you, a complete stranger. Hi! Yeah, it's like the fakest shit you've ever seen. I, I, you know, I can understand if you might be you having having a good day. Hi, how you doing? How you doing? I'm, I'm having a great day. But they do it all the time. Hi, even when they don't feel good. But anyway, I'm thinking, okay, if you had your own, maybe this is how they feel. I don't know, cause we we you know, <laughs> we be going through it. 
maybe if you had your own motherfucking 40 acres and a mule somewhere and you don't get out that much and you don't really see people for weeks at a time because you got it like that you know you don't have to go to the plantation every goddamn day so when you do see somebody you would be like hi long time no see brother nice to see you I don't know I'm just saying but anyway let's get back to it so all these things are for the godly I mean I still like it. all these things are for the, the use of man the principal things for the whole use of a man's life are water fire iron salt flour of wheat honey milk and blood of grapes and oil and clothing all these things are good for the godly so to the sinner they are turned into evil right Esau would take all this shit and oppress a man with it even a man in his heritage you know I fancy I, I, I enjoy sometimes I enjoy watching uh, they got some some of these videos out here about people that live in these like I don't know I don't think they per se live in them I think they go I haven't watched one in a long time but um, there's some about the like say for instance the gypsies they kind of live out in the de desert you know they they nomads they, they go where they want to you know nobody fucks with them they don't really work they live off the land they make shit and they uh, they have different ways to make money you know whether it be getting wood or making charcoal all kind of shit like that yeah they do these things bro there's another group of people that live in the mountains I think they just went up there to camp out to show that they could the whole family you know kids and everything uh, cook food they had a campfire and all that kind of shit like that all kind of different things you know what people just living out in the woods and just away from everybody and they're living off the land and it just seems so tranquil and nice so it shows you that these things are possible but the devil the devil the oppressor would take all these these things that the principal things of life and use them for evil to oppress people with to put your back up against the wall with to make you feel and think that you need him to get it you know all this shit bro and the Lord is gonna come and put an end to all that stuff man all this suffering and misery and stuff like that man in the kingdom of heaven gonna be dwelled with righteousness bro come on let's go get this let's go get this this epistle here uh, I want to go to the book of Matthew chapter 28 verse 10 hold on that's not the right one. Oh, Salaki Matthew 10 28 okay this is the book of Matthew chapter 10 verse 28 it says and fear not them which kill the body but are not able to kill the soul but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell right we want to uh, you know change gears and go back For to us, looking look to us, the Israelites, the Lord's chosen people, you know, so hey, don't fear them, you know, understand the, the, the overall general picture that we're what we're involved in, we're the children of Israel, you know, we went off, but now it's time for us to return to the one true living God, and that's great mercy. So we, we, don't, we don't have to fear Esau no more, we don't have to stay upon Esau no more, understanding that this is the end of his age, understanding Yahweh Shem in full control. So fear not them that, that can destroy the body, but fear the Lord, Yahweh Shem that can destroy both soul and body in hell. So we understand, you know, at the end of the day, when all these calamities happen to us in the time of Jacob's trouble, we're going to constantly fear Yahweh Shem and believe the report and believe and trust in him, bro. You know, to not take the M-A-R-K, the C-H-I-P, night, you know, to not, uh, to not bow down to the image, you know, and it's, uh, I don't know, because the scripture speaks about how the Lord, Yahweh Shemashah, will do nothing but he reveal his secrets unto his servants and prophets. You know, the Lord has told us to give us this understanding, to shout it out on the, on the rooftops, you know, to warn the children of Israel, to compel them to come in, to repent to the one true living God, understanding all this mercy, right? 
Come on, let's go to the book of Hebrews, chapter 12. Okay, bro. Hopefully, hopefully, uh, this, hopefully, it's, 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 I'm, hopefully, through the spirit, I'm conveying this out. Uh, okay, man, not all over the place or nothing like that. Okay, I hope it's coming out okay, man. I do pray that it is. This is the book of Hebrews, chapter twelve, verse nine. Right? Hold on, hold on. Before we get that, I want to get Jeremiah chapter five, verse twenty-four. Jeremiah five twenty-four. Right, to go along with that. Now fear not them, fear not them that can destroy the body, but fear him, Yahweh Shemashah, that can destroy both soul and body in hell. This is the book of Jeremiah chapter 5, verse 24. It says, Hold on, let's let's start at verse 20. Jeremiah chapter 5, verse 20. It says, Declare this in the house of Jacob. And publish it in Judah, saying, Hear now this, O foolish people, and without understanding, which have eyes and see not, which have ears and hear not. Fear ye not me? Said the Lord, Yahweh Shemashah, will ye not tremble at my presence, which have placed the sands for the bounds of the sea by a perpetual decree, that it cannot pass it? And though the waves thereof toss themselves, yet can they not prevail. Though they roar, yet can they not pass over it. But this people have a revolting and rebellious heart. They are revolted and gone. Neither say they in their heart, Let us now fear the Lord Yahweh Shemashah, our God, that giveth rain, both former and latter in his season. He reserved unto us the appointed weeks of the harvest. Verse 25 in the point, Your iniquities have turned away these things, and your sins have withholding good things from you. Okay? Right, our sins. So, Understanding these things that we spoke about early on in this epistle, how Yahweh Shemashah make it poor, he make it rich, you know, uh, he kill and make it alive. The Lord is showing us this great mercy to return to him. Oh, happy Israel are we, for the things that are pleasing to Yahweh Shemashah are made known to us. To let us know about Esau that he's he's got bounds that he, he cannot pass. You know, he when he's he's when he's a, a, about to try to fill his belly, the Lord's gonna the, the iron weapon is gonna strike him through. You know, he's not going to fulfill his enterprise. This um, this new world agenda that he's trying to promote is not, bro. It's over. And this is the mercy that we we have through Yahweh Shemashah by the preaching of this word. Not only that, bro. The, the, the total understanding that the Lord created everything. He created us to be his chosen people. You know, we are the Israelites, brothers and sisters. Come on. This is the Hebrews chapter 12, verse 9. It says, Furthermore, we have had fathers in our flesh which corrected us, and we gave them reverence. Shall we not much rather be subjection, be in subjection unto the Father of spirits and live, bro? You know, even that is mercy and the will of the Lord that we have returned to him in these last days for his name's sake. Scripture speaks about no man comes to the Father except by the Son. And no man goes to the Son unless the Father, Yahweh Shemashah, draw him. Yahweh Shah said, You have not chosen me, but I've chosen you, bro. This is a. Wow, you know. And I know this is going to be a. Uh, This is a. Uh, I might have to do a part two to this, for real. Because, uh, you know, it's not of him that will it, nor him that run it, but Yahweh Shemashah that shows mercy, bro. Out of all the nations on the earth, we are the Lord's chosen people. Out of the chosen people, there's a remnant according to the election of grace. You know, the 144 whole full elect and one third of Israel, bro. And it's all the mercy of Yahweh Shema And uh, the, 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 the brothers from Dallas were speaking about it. I think it was that last camp last week 
when they got into the, the uh, great multitude. And that blew my mind right there too because, you know, we're talking about, on one hand, we're talking about the governing body. Now, on one hand, we're talking about the governing body. Uh, but on the other hand, we're talking about the great multitude, the believers. And we're talking about from different time frames as well, man. All different spirits and stuff that make up this great multitude. You know, because the scripture speaks about the dead in Yahweh Shah shall arise first. And when these things happen, bro, we, we talking about them. But to see them with our own eyes. I can't wait. I mean, I can't wait. But I'm excited. I mean, I really am, bro. And I'll be praying the Lord, Yahweh Shemashah, have mercy on us to allow us to, in, to endure to the end. To not bug out. You know, like we've seen these, these, these guys bug out, bro. And, and go against the doctrine. To be blinded. The, the, the table has become a snare. My goodness, bro. May the Lord continue to show us mercy and favor, okay? Uh, let me see something. Yeah, I think we're going to leave it right there, man. We're going to leave it right there. We're going to close it out. We're just at Hebrews chapter 12, verse 9. Because it's, you know, that's that's a good that's a good bit. Uh, and Lord willing, it wasn't, oh, Lord willing, it was all just one deep. Okay? Uh, and I try to convey it to the best of my ability through the Spirit and the power of Yahweh Shemashah about this great mercy that the Lord has bestowed on us. And uh, I try to make a part two to this. Uh, but I will continue to to bring it out, you know, until you know the spirit is, you know, is, is over. But Hebrews chapter twelve verse nine. Furthermore, we have had fathers of our flesh which corrected us, and we gave them reverence. Shall we not much rather be in subjection unto the Father of spirits and live? That's right, the Father of spirits, the Lord that controls everything, bro. And everyone, the animals, you know, you know, uh, and to re and to reverent to uh, to get that understanding, you can you can think about Daniel in the lion's den, you know. And then afterwards, the king threw those uh, who did he throw in the, the other servants or anything, the uh, the guards or something. He threw somebody else in there. After they took Daniel out, and the lions attacked the shit out of them motherfuckers, because the Lord was holding those lions back, man, through the spirit and the power of Yahweh Shemashai, man. So this is the Lord that we serve, the Lord God of Israel. Joel chapter two verse twenty-seven. For so you shall know that I'm in the midst of Israel, and I'm the Lord your God, and none else. And my people shall never be ashamed. Night. You know. So. It's a beautiful thing, this great mercy that the Lord has given us, this understanding to come back to return to Him. After all they done did, Esau, Edom, the Caucasian race, the devil that the Bible speaks of, to deceive the nations, to try to deceive us, to keep us away from Yahweh Shemasha. But this, you know, Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5, let not mercy and truth forsake thee, bro. To your so called Negro, Hispanic, and Native American Indians out there. So, man, Lord willing, this was edifying and exhorting. I'm going to give all honors and praises to Yahweh. Bahashem, Yahweh Shah, Bahashem Rikah Quidash. I want to give double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone for bringing out 100% truth and keeping it real. Salutations to the 144 hopeful elect of Israel pushing this word in all truth and sincerity. And the one third of Israel who believe in the word and follow the Lamb wherever you go. Shalom, brothers and sisters. Shalom, y'all.